Greetings and welcome back folks, Kamal here once again and today I was in the mood for some contour integration so we're gonna derive a really cool result using this integral here, it's the integral from 0 to infinity of arctangent 2 divided by 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, cool. Now, before getting into the complex analysis bit, we could do something quite simple. Notice that we have an inverse tangent, and differentiating inverse tangents yields rational functions. So we could do some integration by parts first. So on integration by parts, we have x times inverse tangent 2 divided by 1 plus x squared, with the limits being 0 and infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of x times now the derivative of the inverse tangent that would be 1 by 1 plus 4 divided by 1 plus x squared squared and of course by the chain rule I have to now differentiate the argument of the inverse tangent so I have negative 2 divided by 1 plus x squared squared with a 2x because of the derivative of x squared so I get negative 4x up top, integration with respect to x. It's quite trivial to show that this thing converges to 0 in both limits, so i here is the integral from 0 to infinity, we have the negatives cancelling out quite nicely, and we have 4 times the integral, rather, of x squared divided by... We can expand using 1 plus x squared squared in the denominator here, yielding 1 plus x squared squared, plus 4 divided by 1 plus x squared squared, and we also have a 1 by x squared squared term here as well, which results in some really nice cancellation once again. So the target integral reduces to 4 times the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by, now expanding the 1 plus x squared squared term, we have x to the fourth power plus 2x squared plus 1 plus 4, which is of course 5. And now for some complex analysis. So we'll define a complex valued f of z as z squared divided by z to the fourth power plus 2z squared plus 5. And we're now interested in the poles of our function f of z. So for that, we'll take the denominator, write it again as z squared plus 1 plus 4, which means we have a nice factorization given that this thing is negative 2i squared. So we have z squared plus 1 minus 2i times z squared plus 1 plus 2i. Okay, cool. So that means the poles of the function are z1 equal to root negative 1 plus 2i, z2 equal to root negative minus 1 minus 2i, z3 would be, well, the negative of z1, so we have negative root minus 1 plus 2i, and z4 is, in fact, negative root minus 1 minus 2i. Okay, cool. So we have four simple poles to deal with, and now let's decide what contour to use. So here's the complex plane in all its glory, the imaginary axis and the real axis, and we'll integrate along the quarter circle contour in the first quadrant. So here's one radius of our quarter circle running from 0 to r, and the other would run from 0 to i times r. And here's the arc bit of it that we'll call uppercase gamma and we'll call the entire thing C. And wait, one radius just doesn't look quite nice when it's colored. Yeah, that looks kind of thick. And that's kind of how we like it. So I'll just leave it over there. I mean, instead of, you know, trying to micro adjust over here, like, God damn, it looks slightly better now. That's not what matters. What matters is that we know that there is only one pole enclosed by our contour, and that is z sub 1. So we only have one residue to evaluate here. We know that the integral over the closed contour c equals 2 pi i times the sum of residues of the function f of z enclosed by our contour. And in this case, we're interested in the limiting case of r going to infinity. Okay, cool, that's quite nice. So let's evaluate the residue of f of z at z equal to z1. And because this is a simple pole, so the calculation is pretty straightforward, all we need is the limit as z tends to z1 of z minus z1 times f of z. 
So that means we need to evaluate the limit as z tends to root minus 1 plus 2i, z minus root minus 1 plus 2i times the function f of z, which is z squared divided by factorizing the denominator gives us z minus root minus 1 plus 2i, then we have z plus root minus 1 plus 2i, then we have a couple other factors over there, we need a bit more writing space. Yeah, that should be enough. So we have z minus root minus 1 minus 2i now. And of course we have z plus root minus 1 minus 2i. Okay, cool. There's some cancellation straight away. And now evaluating the limit gives us minus 1 plus 2i up top. And downstairs we have two of these things over here. So that means we have 2 root minus 1 plus 2i. Then we have z minus something times z plus the exact same something. So that would be z squared minus that something squared. So we're left with minus 1 plus 2i minus minus 1 minus 2i. So the negatives will just get rid of them. So we have plus 1 plus 2i to deal with now. There's some cancellation over here of the negative ones. And also we have this thing up top and its square root in the denominator. So that means we're left with the square root of minus 1 plus 2i up top divided by, let's see, we got 8 times i. Okay, cool. So that was the only residue we needed to evaluate. And we know that the integral over the contour equals 2 pi i times the sum of residues. And there is only one residue to evaluate. So we got this thing here some cancellation of the i's, 2 is an even number last time I checked. So we got pi by 4 times root minus 1 plus 2i. Okay, cool. That's the integral over the entire contour c. But we can break this down. We're traversing this bad boy in the counterclockwise sense. So the integral over c equals 1 integral from 0 to r, plus 1 integral from i r to 0, plus an integral over the arc bit that is gamma. And we're interested in the limiting case of r going to infinity. So let's take a moment to analyze each one of these integrals. First up, we'll talk about the limit of the integral from 0 to r as r goes to infinity. Here, z is on the real axis, so we can parameterize z as z equal to t. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of t squared divided by t to the fourth power plus 2 t squared plus 5 dt, which is exactly our target integral divided by 4. So we'll just call this thing i sub 1. And now what about the integral from i r to 0 in the limit as r goes to infinity? Here we see that z is on the imaginary axis, so we'll parameterize it as z equal to i times t. So we have the integral from i infinity to 0 of i t squared, which is i squared t squared. So we just have negative t squared up top. And the differential element dz turns into i dt. So here's i, here's dt. t to the 4 is still t to the 4. And we have negative 2 t squared now plus 5 which can be thought of as a cool bonus integral that is i sub 2. Okay, cool, that is quite nice. And now what about the integral over the arc gamma in the limit as r goes to infinity? Well, this is pretty easy to deal with. The gamma curve parameterization is z here equal to r times e to the i t, with t being bound between 0 and pi by 2. And the analysis revolves around the absolute value of the integral. We know that the absolute value of the integral over a contour gamma of a function f is less than or equal to the integral over the same contour gamma of the absolute value of that function f. And in our case, we have the integral over gamma of z squared divided by z to the fourth power plus 2z squared plus 5 in the absolute value sense, being less than or equal to the integral over gamma of the absolute value of z squared divided by z to the fourth power plus 2z squared plus 5 dz. Okay, cool. So we know exactly how z here is parameterized. 
and we're interested in the limiting case of r going to infinity. And the denominator here would be a quartic polynomial in R, whereas the numerator would be a quadratic polynomial in R. So obviously the denominator grows much, much faster than the numerator, and the integrand crashes to zero in this limit. So we have the limit as R goes to infinity of the absolute value of the integral over gamma equal to zero, and the only complex number with the zero modulus is the complex number zero itself, which implies that the limit of the integral over gamma as r tends to zero as r tends to infinity is in fact zero, so we can get rid of that term entirely, which is of course very convenient. So we have this equation involving i1 and i2, and actually I need to make something clear here for the integral i sub two. Now this thing is clearly real valued because we have t squared and t to the fourth power. So it doesn't matter if t values are i times something. It's perfectly cool. This thing is going to be real valued. So I might as well call the right hand side i times i2. So that means we have a complex number i1 plus i times i2 on the left equal to a complex number that is pi by 4 times root negative 1 plus 2i on the right. So we're interested in i1, which would be pi by 4 times the real part of root negative 1 plus 2i, which we are about to calculate. So for the complex number negative 1 plus 2i, we'll write this in the polar form, and for that we need the absolute value, which is 1 plus 2 squared, that gives us a value of root 5 for the modulus, and e to i times the principal argument. This complex number is in the second quadrant, so we need a pi minus arctangent 2 term, I believe. Yeah, that's about right. So for the square root of negative 1 plus 2i, we have root root 5 e to the i times pi by 2 minus arctangent 2 divided by 2. Okay, cool. So for the real part, we'll make use of Euler's formula and take the cosine bit of it. So we have real part root negative 1 plus 2i equal to root root 5 times the cosine of pi by 2 minus arctangent 2 by 2. And cosine pi by 2 minus something is, of course, equal to the sine function. So we have root root 5 sine of arctangent 2 by 2, which we need to evaluate as well. This is fun. Anyway, so we need a right triangle. Not half bad. And we'll call arctangent 2 theta so that we have tangent theta equal to 2. So here's our acute angle theta. The perpendicular is 2. The base is 1. And the hypotenuse is root 5. So that means we have the cosine of theta. The cosine would be 1 over root 5. And for sine of the half angle, that would be theta by 2. We just need root 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. So that yields root 1 minus 1 by root 5 divided by 2. Simplifying this gives us root root 5 minus 1 divided by 2 times root 5. And yes, there will be some golden ratio stuff over here. So we have 1 by root root 5 times square root root 5 minus 1 by 2, which could be expanded as root 5 plus 1 by 2 minus 1. So this thing over here is the golden ratio, and we have 1 by root root 5 square root golden ratio minus 1, and we know that phi minus 1 equals 1 by phi from that equation defining the golden ratio. So this implies that the sine of the inverse tangent of 2 divided by 2 equals 1 by root phi times 5, which itself is a pretty cool result. So finally, for the integral i sub 1, we have root root 5 times 1 by root phi times root root 5, where there's some lovely cancellation taking place, of course. Oh, I forgot the pi by 4 over here terribly. Sorry about that. 
So that means the integral from zero to infinity of x squared dx divided by x to the fourth power plus two x squared plus five equals pi divided by four times root phi. And of course our target integral was four times this integral. So this implies that the integral from zero to infinity of arc tangent two divided by one plus x squared dx equals pi divided by the square root of the golden ratio. Quite a pleasant surprise indeed. A beautiful result, wonderful solution development. I enjoyed solving this integral quite a bit. I hope you enjoyed the video as well. I hope you learned something from the video. Drop your comments down in the, drop your questions down in the comment section. I almost got that mixed up as drop your comments down in the questions section which wouldn't exactly be that wrong because it's a math channel, so the comment section is mostly for questions. Uh, anyway, so this was cool. Drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort I'm putting into my work, you can support me on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.